Hi friends, it's me Nicole. After a series of heavy topic videos, I think it's time for us to have something that we can look forward to with excitement and uh, expectations. Since it's the beginning of April, let's talk about my April TBR. TBR and I have a love-hate relationship. I love to see my rating have more structure and also I love the excitement that TBR gives me. But I also get frustrated if I ever lose interest to the books on my TBR during the month or I cannot make or cannot rate most of the books in my TBR, which is very common for me. But since this year I'm participating in some reading events that I'm looking forward to every month, I think it's time to put the books together and really look at them. Oh, and I almost forgot to say, by the time I filmed this, I already got my second round assignment for the Booktube prize, which is a prize that by Booktube and for Booktube. I did my first round and submitted at the 28th of March, so the result already comes out. And also, we got the new books, and I got some pretty big books that I cannot mention it um, on my channel yet. But yeah, I'll have to adjust my reading goals somehow according to those books. But still, at this time, these are the books that I plan to read in April. So without further ado, let's dive into the books. So as I mentioned many times on my channel, this year I'm participating in Invisible Cities, which is an event that promoting translated literature and also the international awareness. So we pick three countries, they pick three countries every month for us to choose book from. And this month, the countries are Equatorial Guinea, Vietnam, and um, Peru. So for Equatorial Guinea, I picked up this book called By Night the Mountain Burns by Juan Thomas Avila Larua, translated by Jethro Sitar. This is a book talking about a boy grew up in a mysterious island with his grandfather, a bunch of mothers, and no father. And we learn a dark chapter of this island's history when the, they have a cholera outbreak. And by the review of this book, we know that it's inspired by the author's own childhood, which I'm very intrigued by. And also, it has a lot of rich islanders' cultures in this book. So that's why I'm looking forward to it. Another book that I have my eye on from Equatorial Guinea is from the same author and the same translator. It's called The Gurugu Pledge. It's talking about a bunch of desperate immigrants who came to the foot of Mount Gurugu and before they went to Europe to find a safe place. I literally cannot choose between those two books and they are all from the same author. So I asked one of my friends and I read the blurb to my friend and he's like, oh, pick the first one. So that's why I picked that one. And if I'm lucky or if I work really hard on reading all the books you later will see and also the book to price book, I maybe get into this one this month, but I don't think so because I really have a long list of TBR. The second country on the list is Peru. For Peru, I picked The Distance Between Us by Renaro Cisneros, translated by Fiong Fetch. This is a family saga novel. I already can hear some of my book to friends saying that, oh, family saga, please no. But I'm not intimidated by family sagas, and sometimes I really enjoy them, depends on how well the character develops. And also, I always think there's some similarities between the Latin American family and the some big Asian family culture, so I'm always wanting to see what are they like. And this book is also inspired by the relationship between the author and his father. And his father was a pretty important political figure in Peru during the year of 1970s to 1980s. So that's another reason that attracts me. Another book I got from Peru is Nine Moons by Gabriela Winner. It's translated by Jessica Powell. This is a memoir talking about her pregnancy and the motherhood as a queer woman which pregnancy is actually not, and motherhood, it's actually not some topic that I'm particularly interested in, but the author also mentioned on the blurb that it's also discussing how people are using uh, human body, like female's bodies, as a battleground even when they're pregnant. So that part is what I was interested in. 
And also, I think I just got this book because it's like thirty dollars. The last country for invisible cities for April is Vietnam. For Vietnam, I have two books on my TBR for the longest time, so it's time to finish them up. The first one is the best we could do by Tibui. This is um,、uh, I I think I butchered the pronunciation. I actually googled it and tried to pronounce it. It's Tibui. Anyhow, so um, this is a graphic memoir of the author talking about her family story, uh, from. When they escaped from Vietnam, when the South Vietnam was、uh, in danger, and also how they came to the U.S. and tried to build a new home. This book illustrated the stories and the difficulties that her family was facing back in the 1970s, and also shows how many sacrifices parents are made for their children, which I don't think it's very difficult for me to read because I don't think I can read anything. Related to parent, it's interesting. I I don't think I can read an anything related to parent sacrificing for their children without crying my eyes out. But I just noticed on the last book, I said, um, I'm not very interested in the topic of parenting. So I think for me, what interests me is the relationship between a parent and a、uh, somehow grown up, like a little older than toddler. Um, kid, not that parenting itself. So I'm not interested in parenting, but also I'm、uh, very touched and moved by the relationship between parents and children, which is, I don't think, I don't know. I think it's two different things. What do you think? So anyhow, back to this book. I have been eyeing this for a very very long time, and I'll read it for this. Month. The second book I got for Vietnam is a poetry collection. It's called Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vuong. This is a poetry collection discussing war, violence, nationality, sexuality, and topics like that. Again, another book on my TBR, on my interested to read list for a long time. So that's all the books I'm gonna read for Invisible Cities. And moving on, I am going to participating in Indie Press project. Again, all the information will be down below. And for this month, the indie press we're supporting is called Coffee House Press, which I know exactly what book I want to read. The book I'm gonna read from Coffee House Press is called "Tell Me How It Ends: An Essay in Forty Questions" by Valeria Lucelli. This is a book about the questions that the author had to translate to the children from Latin America in the American border who is facing deportation. I have read a novel by this author called The Lost Children Archive, which I didn't really enjoy because mainly the author was trying to put so many different things into that one book. But I did really wanted to know more and did enjoy the part where she talks about. Uh, the protagonist translated those questions to the children, which is inspired by her real life, I believe. So I'm really interested to read a nonfiction talking about just her experiences on doing that. So tell me how it ends is exactly what I need. And the final event I'm gonna try to participate in April is a Nordic reading club. Which some of you may know that I love everything about Norway, so I'm learning Norwegian. Mostly, I'm self-studying now, but、uh, I used to take Norwegian classes from a Scandinavian language school. And even though I'm not attending their class actively now, but I still got their newsletters, which I found out they are starting a Nordic reading club. So they read books from all the Scandinavian countries and also just discussing them as a book club format, which is very very exciting for me because I don't really have a lot of opportunities to contact contact to make connection with Scandinavian cultures. So I'm very looking forward to this event. So in April we are reading a book called Doppler by a Norwegian author called Adrian Rud. This is a story between a man and a moose. After the man's father died, he moved into the woods and living in a tent, and de eventually developed this relationship between him and the moose. And all those books are the books I plan to read for the reading events I'm participating in. So I have two more books I want to try to read in April, despite I also have the book two books that I cannot talk about. The first book will be. The Vanishing Half by Brett Bennett. 
This is a book that I apparently missed out because I wasn't active on BookTube last year, and everybody has already read it and loved it, and it's. Just got nominated by to the long list of the Women's Prize for Fiction this year, and it's talking about two sisters' life when they are escaping from their home, I think, and their life has been separated into different directions. One went back to the community that they grew up and lived there with her black children, and the other one ended up passing as white and get married and have a whole new. Life passing as white. This book particularly interests me because I watched a random video that YouTube recommended to me talking about a the interviewee's mother who was actually passing as white her entire life、um, as a black woman, and also she married a very racist husband. So she applied a light foundation even before she went to bed. Her entire life. So when I saw the blurb of this book, I just immediately think about that story, which is fascinating to me. And also, apparently, everybody loves this book. And the last book on my I can share it now TBR is They Called Us Enemy. This is a book that written by George Takei, Justin Essinger, Stephen Scott, and illustrated by Hermione Becker. This is a book that inspired by George Takei's childhood when he found out that he has to go to the Japanese concentration、um, camp during the Second World War just because his the country that his father is from is in war with the country of his, which is America and Japan. As I mentioned in my last week's video on the talk of stop AAPI hate. The Japanese concentration camp is a very important chapter in the recent America history, and also it shows the discrimination of Asian people just never went away from then to now. So I just want to read more about it. And that's all the books I have on my I can share with you now TBR. I still have the booktube prize that I have to add to all of those readings, so it's gonna be a heavy reading April. But now I'm in the phase that I want to read anything and everything, so might as well take an advantages of it. And thanks for watching. Let me know if you have heard or read any of the books I mentioned, or if you are interested in them. Say hi in the comment section down below. I'll link my website, which is a book blog, which you can find more of my reading life、uh, down below in the description as well, and also some other social medias. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up. Stay healthy. Happy reading. I'll see you in my next book video. Bye.